Hi everyone, it's Karen. I want to give you a gentle yoga sequence today. So this is a really perfect kind of practice if you're just stepping onto your mat after a long absence, maybe because of injury or maybe just life got in the way. And if you're learning to trust your body again after healing from something, it's a gentle way to approach coming back into just tapping into your breath and a little bit of gentle movement and stretching. Uh, not every yoga practice can fit every body. So some of us have limited mobility in our wrists or our knees or shoulders maybe even your neck, you'll adjust as needed, but I'll give you as many options as I can to make it a well-rounded practice so that you can just kind of get back into moving your body and feeling good. You're going to need a couple of props. You're going to need a blanket or two, kind of a firmer blanket with a nice tight weave is good rather than something loose, like a um, you know, big waffly knit might not be as easy to work with. So something with a nice tight weave to it that gives you a little bit of stability and support. And if you have a yoga block, that's a really nice prop. If you don't have a block, go modify, but a block is always a great prop to have if you have it on hand. Let's start on our backs today. And just lying with your blanket folded as a pillow. And as you lie back, this is called broken bridge or constructive rest, sometimes we call it. So get your head situated on the blanket where it's comfortable and then walk your feet wide to the edges of your mat left and right and drop your knees into center in each other. Let your left hand rest on your heart and your right hand rest on the low belly. And just take a few slow deep breaths here. So with the help of your hands, start paying attention to your breath. On your inhale, noticing if you can lift your hands, both in the belly and the chest area. And on your exhale, let the hands fall gently back into center. So feeling the chest soften, the belly drop back in like it's hugging back in towards your rib cage. Inhaling deeply. Exhale, softening. And continue moving through those deep inhales and exhales a few more rounds on your own at your own pace. But as you take the breath, just notice that it's a really easy, natural inhale and exhale. So it's not like I'm sniffing the breath in or pushing the breath out. It's a really complete inhale to both my chest and my belly. And a really soft, just like I'm letting the air out of a balloon, exhale. Take one more round here. And then extend your feet out so they're nice and long. Take up some space. So walk your feet wide away from your hips. Maybe even just nudge your heels down so they're lengthening out of your hips a little bit more. And then walk your shoulders down away from your ears with your arms at your sides, palms up. Take a few deep breaths here. And now let your fingers just relax. Your toes drop, your feet fall heavy. Start to relax all of the muscles of your face. So across your eyes even relaxing the muscles of the forehead across your temples. Relax your jaw and your lips, and even let your tongue drop. You might even pop the air bubbles between your ears. And then as though a pair of warm hands were resting on the tops of your shoulders, let them ease down into the mat. Let the weight of the belly, the ribs, and the back body sink into the mat or the carpet, wherever you are. All the way down to your heels, let your legs be heavy. And then let's bend the knees one more time. Keep your left knee as it is. Bring your right knee into your chest with your hands. Give it a little squeeze so there's a little compression in the low belly and into that front hip flexor on your right side. Start to wake up your ankle and your foot. So just some gentle circles, either direction, maybe spread your toes, point and flex through your ankle and foot. And then we'll change sides. Bring the left knee in. Start with a little compression into the low belly and waist, and then waking up the ankle and foot joint. Pointing, flexing all the way through your feet, pointing really strong all the way to the tips of your toes and then pushing through your heel. Waking up the arches of the feet inner and outer calves and shins. All right, coming back with the right knee hugged in, the left leg extended long onto the mat now or the carpet, wherever you are. Bring your right knee a little closer to your right shoulder. 
but still feel that anchoring down under your back left shoulder and left back hip point. Draw the right knee in really close. You should feel a deeper stretch in towards your right glute. And then we're gonna take it into a twist to the left. So take a big inhale to prepare first, and then on your exhale, drop the knee all the way over to the left side of your mat. Your right arm can come out to your side in the shape of a T with your palm up, or maybe a bent elbow with your palm up. If your hand doesn't want to connect to the earth, so if it kind of is tight across the shoulders or chest and your hand is floating up here, take it up behind you until you can make a connection of your hand to something underneath you. Even if that means coming out of your twist a little bit, see if you can drop deeper into the back of your right shoulder blade and let that open up your body. So feeling that stretch across the collarbones, the chest, and then any amount more that you want to deepen the twist, use your left hand to your outer right knee or thigh and just give a little nudge down towards the mat. So nice. Carefully unwind, come back to center. With your knees bent, your feet flat, take your palms and right at the very roots of your thigh, so at the thigh creases where the thigh bones, the femurs, plug into your pelvis, use the heels of your hands to give a really solid push, like you're pressing your thigh bones out of your hip sockets and creating more space there. You should feel a really lovely lengthening in your low back, should feel nice. And then let's release and take that to the other side. So straightening out the right leg, bring the left knee in close to your chest and then bring it closer to your left shoulder. So still feeling anchored under the right back hip and then drawing the left knee in close to left shoulder. You should feel a nice stretch all the way to the outer hip and glute. And then we'll take a big inhale before we twist. So inhaling first. Exhale, like you're wringing out a sponge, drop that knee all the way to the right side of the body. Left arm now out to your side with your palm up, either in the shape of a T at your side or with a bent elbow or bringing it overhead until you can make some connection to the floor and the hand. And then drop deeper under that left shoulder. So even if you come out of the twist a bit, see if you can create more space under the back shoulder. And then maybe nudging your left knee closer to your right side with the help of your hand. Really great stretch if you ever are prone to any sciatic issues. Really nice release for all the tissues around the sciatic nerve. All right, let's come on back to center. Bring two knees into your chest. Maybe split your knees wider apart, one a hand on each shin. And then bring the knees back together, place your feet flat. We're gonna do a gentle pelvic tuck, so it's not a full bridge. We're just gonna peel the tailbone up towards the backs of the knees and then peeling up towards the back rib cage. So keeping my shoulders and my shoulder blades still connected to the mat. And then finally lifting a little taller all the way up onto the tips of the shoulders or my triceps. And then we're gonna come down the same way. So bring just the upper back down. So ladies, down to your sports bra line. Gentlemen, it's down to about your mid rib cage. And then let's bring the full rib cage back down, but try to keep your tailbone and your pelvis lifted off the mat here. So you can still see there's some space under my hips, curling my tailbone up to the backs of the knees. And then all the way back down, everything on the mat. We'll do that again. So peel the pelvis up. You can even do the same check with yourself. So if you can slide your hand under your waist and then lifting the second segment of your spine. So the thoracic spine lifting up towards the sports bra line or the rib cage borders of the scapula, and then finally lifting really tall up. And then this time we're going to grab the two edges of your mat if you're on a yoga mat in your hands. If you're not on a yoga mat, just rest your pinky fingers into the ground like karate chopping it. If you have a mat underneath you, grasp your mat in your two hands with your thumbs on top, fingers underneath, and let that pop your chest up a little higher, walk your shoulders underneath you a little bit more, feeling your breastbone lift to the sky, and then really slowly we're gonna come down from this bridge, but this time articulate through every single bone of your spine. So see if you can close your eyes and sense that you can feel every bone of your spine coming back down one at a time, just like laying a necklace back down to the yoga mat, all the way down to the tip of the tail. Take a breath at the bottom. And then once more, use the heels of your hands, push into the roots of your thighs, give them a press out of the hip sockets, just lengthening the low back and release. We're gonna come around onto our side and then up to a seat. And this is where we're gonna move the blanket or a block underneath you for a seat. So either one's fine. The advantage of using something underneath your seat is that if you have tight hips, it can tend to drop you into your low back. And with lifting your support up onto a blanket or a block, 
It allows the hips to relax a little bit more and give you a taller lift of the spine. We want that for the breath. So we can take in more breath when our spine is more erect. So sitting nice and tall, close your eyes and then nod your pelvis forward and back a couple of times until you feel where is that tallest line of my spine from the root of my tail to the top crown of my head. Keep your eyes closed for a couple breaths. Just sense it to what your body's doing, how it's feeling in space. Can you root down through your two sit bones equally? And then feel the low belly just gently draw in to protect the low back and help you lift taller. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. Remember those nice warm hands dropping onto your shoulders once more. And then slide your ears back so they're over your shoulders. And as though you're balancing maybe your morning cup of tea or coffee on top of your head, sit so tall that you wouldn't spill a drop. Take a really big inhale. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> inhale together for three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, three, two, one. Out the nose, easy exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, three, two, one. Pause. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, three, two, one. Pause. Exhale, three, two, one. Again, inhaling, three, two, one. Pause. Exhale, three, two, one, pause. One more round. Inhale, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, three, two, one, and pause. Inhale, bring your arms up overhead, nice and tall. Seal your palms to touch. Exhale, bring thumbs to the heart centers, keeping your spine tall. One more time, inhale, big reach, stretching up. Exhaling, bringing thumbs to heart, but keeping a lift of the spine. Let's take the left hand down, right arm all the way up and over in a big side stretch. So rooting down through your left hand, let that lift your bottom waist a little bit more rather than collapsing into the bottom ribs. And then open up the top rib cage by lifting your gaze to your top hand. Imagine you could get longer from your right sit bone all the way up to your right fingernails. Open up the space between every one of your right ribs. So those are your intercostal muscles, really important for expanding your breath. And then we'll take it to the other side, the right hand down, left arm up and over. So take a moment to get grounded under your right hand, feel the lift of the left arm, and then lengthen the left side even more by pressing down through left sit bone, lifting your gaze and your top fingertips up a little taller, opening up both sides of the waist, those intercostal muscles getting more spacious, like you could create more space between every one of your ribs, and then coming back down. All right, let's turn it over onto hands and knees. If you have sensitive knees, either putting a blanket or even a pillow under your knees is fine. So I'm gonna use my blanket and just unfold it. And then we're coming onto the hands and knees. Turn your hands out so that your index fingers point a little bit left and right, so east and west, and your thumbs are pointed straight forward towards the top of your space. And then drop your belly, open up the rib cage, lift your tail and lift your chin ever so gently. And then exhale, push into your hands, round your back, like you're curling chin to chest, tailbone all the way underneath you. Lift your back ribs to the ceiling. Inhale, drop the belly, smile across your collarbones. This is cow pose. Exhale, push into your hands, lift your back ribs to the ceiling. This is cat pose. Take a few more rounds on your own. Try to make it a breathing exercise now. So let the breath Tell you when it's time to change shapes. A full inhale to open and a full exhale to compress and contract. And a couple more times, inhaling, expanding through the body, front body getting longer from chin to tail. Exhale, pushing into your palms, back body getting longer. Let's do one more inhale and exhale. Now coming on down to your knees, Take your knees as wide as your space 
and big toes touching behind you for a child's pose. So you can walk your hands forward and sink into your child here. We're gonna stay for several breaths and if child's pose is not comfortable in that fashion for you, I'm going to give you an adjustment you can do with your blanket. If you're in your child's pose and you're comfortable, just stay as you are. Using your blanket to soften your child's pose if you have knee issues. And I had knee surgery a few years ago. I had to do this for a while after my knee surgery. You'll take the blanket roll and just tuck it behind the knees and give yourself this nice cushion to sit on. So you can press a little bit of your weight from your glutes, your hips back into the blanket, but it really softens the flexion in your knee joint, You're much more friendly. And you can fold hands under the forehead if you want. If you have your yoga block, you could use your yoga block under your head for your child's pose. Use this opportunity to breathe into your whole back body. So spreading across your kidney band and your back ribs with your inhale breath. One more round of breathing here. And then lifting the head, coming back onto all fours, the hands and knees. We're gonna walk the hands all the way to the left. And then I'm gonna just slide this blanket out of the way so you can see the back of my feet. I'm gonna cross my right ankle over my left. So walk your hands all the way to the left side of your space. Hands can either be beside each other or the right hand on top of the left or even outside your left pinky finger and then compress into your left side waist and spread and open through your right side body. Taking it to the other side, uncross your ankles, walk your hands to your right, and then cross your left ankle on top of your right, either hands beside one another or left hand on top or even left hand outside the right. Open up the left waist and ribs and compress into the right side body. And come on back to center. Uncross your feet, walk your hands really far forward, pop up onto your fingertips. So we call these cupcake hands. Imagine you're holding cupcakes under your fingers and you don't want to crush the cupcakes or squish the icing, the frosting. So walk your knees back, stay on your cupcake fingertips and then drop your hips to your heels. So you're getting as much length as you can all the way down to your pinky fingers, like your pinky fingers were growing from your waist. Really nice stretch for the serratus muscles in the side of your body. So these ones here that don't get a lot of attention but need it. And then coming back up onto hands and knees. So this is a nice stretch for your wrists. If you have super sensitive wrists, I'm gonna give you a different option, but if you're playing along with me and your wrists are healthy today, we're gonna to push into the hands and then really grip the mat with your fingertips. So I'm pushing down through my fingerprints a lot and you're gonna rock your body in some circles. So we're getting some nice circular motion through the wrist joints. So if your wrists don't like being down on the mat on all fours, then here's your alternative. Take your hands and tuck your fingers and thumbs into fists and then tuck them in nice and tight and just massage them a few times in each direction. So a few times clockwise, a few times counterclockwise and get that massage going into all the wrists. And then you can give them a little shake like little birds flying away, I like to say. All right, we're gonna get into a really nice stretch for the wrist creases and the forearms now. This is great for everybody. So you're going to bring your hands into fists. Keep your thumbs and fingers tucked in. This is really important. I tend to see students um, spread their fingers out during this one. You really need to keep them tucked in nice and tight and bring your fists together like so. Then you're gonna bring them down to the floor and with your hands connected, so I'm still keeping knuckles connected, you're gonna to start to lift your elbows, then your forearms, all the way up off the mat until you feel a stretch into those wrist creases. It is such a great stretch, it feels so good. Keeping the fingers tucked in nice and tight. Just a couple more breaths. And then let's release. Ah, so nice, and let that go. All right, a toe stretch now. So feet don't get a lot of love. The plantar fascia is the fascia, the connective tissue in the sole of the foot. And when your calf muscles are tight, the Achilles are tight, you can get that um, strain on the fascia of the sole of the foot, which is that plantar fasciitis pain that some of you might be familiar with, where the fascia attaches to the heel, it gets pulled on when the calf muscles are tight or when the Achilles are tight. So really important to stretch your calves. You can do a few things there to stretch your calves. Starting here on hands and knees, just pushing your heel back. If you wanna take it to a full downward facing dog, of course, reaching the heels down towards the mat is a really nice calf stretch. I like just staying in plank and stretching my heel back behind me. You can even do this on your forearms if your uh, wrists are sensitive. And just reaching back through the heel, rocking into the ball of the foot back and forth a few times. Then we're gonna stretch the toes a little bit more interestingly. <laughs> 
you're going to come sitting on a block or a blanket and you're going to make a perch for yourself so tucking all 10 toes under take a seat on your block or on your blanket and we're going to hang out here for a few breaths so let's bring our hands to heart center take a deep inhale deep exhale if it's too much come out and then come back in when you can all right as much as you lean back into your seat, you're adding the pressure, so you're in control of how much weight you're sitting down into your heels. A blanket, a block, or anything else that will cushion the space between your heels and your seat is really nice. If you don't need the prop, you can come all the way down to the heels. Just taking a few more breaths here. Really important to stretch the soles of the feet. A couple deep inhales and exhales. Letting go of any negativity, any thoughts of wanting to flee from this pose. Just let everything soften, just surrender. All right, let's come back onto the hands and knees, untuck your toes, and give a little drum roll stretch out. Okay, we're gonna come to standing next. So really nice to have a blanket for where we're going. You can keep your blanket folded. If you don't have a blanket, it's totally fine to do it without. Blanket's just a nice addition to the pose. So we'll start standing. With your blanket folded, we're going to come into a forward fold. So just tucking the blanket right into your hip creases. You're going to bend your knees a lot, lay your belly down against the blanket. So it's creating this nice cushion between my thighs and my belly. And then with knees bent, feet at least hips distance apart, just dropping into a forward fold. So relaxing your head, your neck. Imagine that you could take all of the wrinkles out of the back of your neck. Like you're stretching the skin on the back of the neck, head as heavy as a bowling ball. Fingertips are just light. And then drop in as though your upper body, your whole torso was like a waterfall just spilling over your legs. Relax the head even more. And then start to move the weight forward and back through your heels and toes a few times. Stretching out through the soles of the feet. Notice how that translates up to stretching through the shins and through the backs of the legs and the hamstrings. And then we're going to pause and center. So find that center forward and back, left and right space under your feet. Lift your tailbone a little higher. Relax your head a little heavier. Deepen your breath. See if you can lift your sitting bones a little higher. Keeping the blanket tucked into the belly. Relax your head even more. And then slowly we're going to come up. So start to walk your hands up your knees or your thighs. Release your blanket and then continue walking your hands up your legs to bring yourself back into standing. Let's finish with a few good stretches for your neck and your trapezius muscles today. So either sitting on your blanket or a pillow or a block again. Finding that comfortable seat on whatever support you'd like underneath you, just perching the hips up a little higher so the knees can relax down below the hip joints and you can feel that lift in your spine once more. Let your hands just rest gently on your knees or your thighs. Close your eyes, take an inhale breath. Let's begin by dropping the right ear to the right shoulder. So imagine like there was a magnet between your right ear and your right shoulder, hugging the two closer to each other. Take your left arm out to your side and lift your fingertips up. Spin your thumb up towards the ceiling and you should feel a really nice softening across the left shoulder and neck. I say a nice softening. It might be intense, but you should feel the muscles soften and release a little bit. Let your right ear get even heavier. And then let's take the right hand just above your left ear. Nod your head in a little closer towards your right shoulder. So let the hand just be an extra heavy help. And then if you still want more, you could take that left hand and just wrap it to the back of your waist with your palm facing out and walk your fingertips towards your right waist. Drop your left shoulder even more. Drop your right ear even more. And then we're going to stay here, but just move the hand a little bit more to the back of the head like you're nodding your chin in closer to your shoulder or your chest now. So we're turning the head in about 45 degrees from where we were. And there's a band of muscle that runs up the back of the neck, not up the center, 
but just to the left and the right, and that's where we're seeking to find that stretch. So letting your chin nod in towards your right side of your chest, moving the stretch up the back of the left neck. And I definitely have found the spot. And again, adjust your hand to wherever you need it to help encourage the length in that space. And then really slowly release your two hands to your lap, lift your head up so chin is parallel to the floor back in center. Keeping your eyes closed, notice what feels different from left to right. And we'll take it to the other side. So dropping left ear to left shoulder. Just get comfortable with that for a couple of breaths. Let your body know what's happening. And then start to move your left, excuse me, your right. <laughs> Yoga teachers don't know the difference between left and right in case you didn't know. Take your right arm out to your side, spin your thumb up gently. Let the right arm get heavier and then take the left hand just above the right ear, just so you can encourage the head to get even heavier, dropping into the left shoulder. Deep breaths, opening up all the spaces along the right top shoulder and trapezius. Those traps are where we hold a lot of tension and tightness. And then again, wrapping your right hand to the back of the waist. If you still want more, fingertips might come to the center of your back. Or if you've got really long arms like me, they might go all the way towards your left hip crease. And then we'll start nodding the chin in towards the shoulder, the chest. So moving it about 45 degrees in. And I'm still using my hand to help lengthen the back of my neck. Really think of your head as heavy as a bowling ball, like let it drop. There's such a tendency to resist or to kind of grip against what's happening instead of just softening into it. Let gravity do all the work here. Your work is to do almost nothing. Deepen your breath. And bring your two hands back to your lap very gently, very slowly. Bring your chin back to center. Take a breath in center. And then nod your chin straight in towards your two collarbones. So there's like a little notch between your collarbones at the center. Let your chin seek to connect to that spot. You might not come close to touching it, but if you could imagine in your mind's eye that your head would be that heavy that your chin could actually touch and reach. Imagine spreading the skin on the back of your neck. And then maybe taking your two hands, lacing your fingers together and bringing them to the back of your skull. Just one more time, encouraging the head to get even heavier. Let your elbows drop towards the floor. Lengthen the back of the neck even more. You might start to feel this stretch even down between your two shoulder blades on your back. That's a good thing. And very slowly bring your elbows wide, lift your chin, coming back to center and just pausing for a moment. And then let's massage it out with some really gentle neck circles. So I like semi-circles rather than full circles. Drop your ear to your shoulder, doesn't matter which side because you're going both ways, and then rolling through center really slow so you're giving yourself that lovely massage through every neck muscle, left to right, right to left. All the way down, all the way through, and again. And then finishing in center, take some gentle little bobble heads. So you know what a bobble head doll looks like. Give yourself a little bobble head. You're just lubricating those cervical discs in your cervical spine, your neck. Really softly, easily, quickly, left, right, left, right, nice and loose. Right. Let's finish with arms up nice and high. Exhale, bring the two hands back to the heart center. One more time, inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And it wouldn't be a yoga practice if we didn't finish with some moments of silence and meditation. You can either come lying flat on your back, you can use your blanket as a head pillow support again, or you can take a seated posture like I'm going to for our meditation practice and any comfortable shape in your body. So the most important thing is that you're holding a shape that requires little to no effort to hold. Like you could stay here all day if I told you you're gonna stay here all day. So think about that position, adjust, fidget, get comfortable, 
and then taking several breaths on your own. And let the rhythm of the breath be natural and even and effortless. So again, we're not sniffing the breath in, we're not pushing the breath out. It's fluid, easy inhale, exhale. Just the same way the waves of the ocean lap gently into the beach and back out to sea. Following the rhythm of nature. any expression off your face, relaxing the muscles. Maybe softening your focus to the soft space between your eyebrows, even though the eyes are closed. The third eye. You might see colors or pictures or words. If you see nothing at all, it's all good. Like to offer this closing mantra or a saying prayer I'm not really sure what to call it but I love finishing my practice with this these words and bring your hands to touch and center just a gesture of gratitude thumbs dropping into your heart and I like to close my yoga practice with this saying so join me I honor the divine within me and I seek that which nourishes my spirit. I listen to the wisdom of the universe and I trust my intuition. I am present in each moment and I am grateful for all of the goodness in my life. I am at peace. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you again soon.